Kia ora and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and as you can see we are at a petrol station there behind us but we're not filling up on any petrol instead we are filling up on coffee. That's right because we've got the CX60 which is Mazda's first ever CX60 and also it's a PHEV so there's no need for petrol at all. Anyway come let's take a look at this. That means you can stop at petrol stations for more of this and less of petrol. I've said that. Like I said before, this is the first CX-60. It's also the first PHEV and there's also a MHEV, so a mild hybrid. But it's also the first Mazda to sit on their large platform or large modular platform. So this and the CX-90 share the same platform. So it is quite a big, a big SUV. This is obviously a five seater. But anyway, large, new and um, well, look at it. It's a, it's a good, handsome looking Mazda, which is great. It does, in terms of design, it does share a lot of the usual Kodo design stuff, but this one's actually come under the watch fly of Akira Tama. Tani. So the head designer, I've probably just, he's, he's going to go, what the hell did you do to my name then? But anyway, what it is, it's, it's a lot more pure and simple in its design, but it also comes with their brilliant light play, which we'll show you down the side. There are four models in the CX-60 or four trim levels. You've got the Touring, you've got the Hamura, which means Blaze or Inferno or something fiery, which is actually not what you want your vehicle to do in all honesty. And then there's the Takami. And there's also two powertrains. So you've got a, like I said before, the mild hybrid, which is a 3.3 litre or the plug-in hybrid, which is a 2.5 litre. But I'll get to more of that in a minute. Looking around the front here, very much uh, very much a Mazda face as you can see and uh, it's what you're looking for in a Mazda. The grill here has got piano blacks on it and a lovely etch around here. The lights are LED, both the DRLs and also the headlights and plenty of airflow to get you around the vehicle. But very much a, you know, you could pick this out of a crowd and go, that's a Mazda. Our review model comes in this glorious soul crystal red, which is just brilliant and I, I love it. It's such a good colour, but I believe there's around about eight colour choices for you to play with and there are a couple of new ones. I'll see if I can list them, but really good colour choices. In terms of if it fits in your garage, we've got 4.74 metres in length, 1.69 metres in height, and also it's got a wheelbase of 2.78 metres, which really transfer, transfers to plenty of room inside so but Matthew will go through that in a while looking around the front here we've got 20 inch uh, nice black uh, alloy wheels here with some I don't know this looks like rub around it but also big wide wheel arches something that's even more apparent as you get around the back you've got nice PHEV sign so it's very proud of being a PHEV which is good the obviously the black mirror caps we do have a nice big panoramic sunroof which is cool and look at these doors they actually slot under here to make sure you don't get your your your, your bottom of your, your uh, trousers dirty or if you happen to be wearing a skirt which i won't go into then you can get that done as well privacy glass the <laughs> The rear wheel arch here does enter into or eat into some of your entrance back here, but um, I'll get, uh, well, we'll get our lanky stunt person to go and do that, what eats into the rear end here. And um, we've got flaps both on this side and also on the other side, this one being the petrol and the plug-in on the other side. The tail end is obviously big and bulbous, which is just how I like it. You've got a lovely roofline spoiler. You've got LED tail lights. You've got your eSkyActive PHEV badging to make sure you know it's a PHEV. And also kicker tailgate that opens up to 570 litres of uh, luggage space when you lift up this area here. So plenty from there. It also comes with around about two and a half tons of towing capabilities and also exhaust types, uh, exhaust tips. Actually, there are no exhaust tips. They're as fake as me. Well, my smile when I hear that Liverpool are doing well at football. Anyway, let's check under the bonnet. Like I said, you've got two powertrains uh, for the CX-60. You've got a 3.3 litre uh, powertrain, which is a straight six, or you've got this one, which is a Skyactiv PHEV, which is a 2.5 litre. This is also this is married to an eight-speed gearbox, and what it gives you is 241 kilowatts of power and 500 newton metres of torque. 
What it is also is a, like I said, a plug-in hybrid. So it's got a 17.8 kilowatt hour battery, which is good for around about 63, 68 kilo kilometers of actual just EV only power or you know EV only drive, which is quite cool. In terms of efficiency, it's around about 2.1 liters per 100 kilometers. And also it, when it out of the exhaust is a roughly 49 grams of CO2, which is makes it pretty efficient. And also when it comes to you know the, the zero to 100 sprint you've roughly got 5.8 seconds which is not bad for this all-wheel drive family vehicle really anyway speaking of things that have got two engines <laughs> Matt is inside I don't know what that means and I'll show you what's going on in there tell you what I certainly could have used those uh, two engines that Dave was talking about at football this morning another thing though that two engines will would have done is to make me feel rejuvenated and sort of full of life. But in a way, this interior of this Mazda CX-60 does that same job. The use of materials, the styling, the textures, all of that stuff is done, I mean, really well executed inside here. And that's a typical trait of Mazdas, especially as you go into this more premium segment of Mazda cars. On this particular Homura, CX-60, you can only have the sort of black interior option with the black leather seats, the black vinyl leather on the dashboard. But when you move up to the Takami trim CX-60, you can have the option of a cream slash white leather, Nappa leather interior as well for that extra premium feel. Still though, Homura, this trim level is just fine. I mean, the seats are very soft, comfortable. You've got a decent bit of bolstering some contrast stitching going on there same thing with the dashboard as well contrast colors the use of materials as i said before up the top of the doors down the middle it's just all soft and it feels like a premium car when you shut the doors when you sort of you know push and pull things there's no creaks no squeaks it's well put together as we expect from mazda especially at this level uh, and then you you know flick the switches of this um storage area for example and just listen to that it is well put together although the um storage space in here isn't actually that much but that's sort of an anomaly for this car because you have some really generous door bins down the bottom i've got in fact two coffee cups in my side here plus some extra space you've got good sized door bins at the back there you've got two cup holders in the armrest you've got space for your sunglasses up here a good size glove box too and down the middle here are some more cup holders and space for a wireless charger for your phone so the integration of everything is really neat really practical as you'd expect from a mazda family suv the luxuries of course as i said with the seats they are also not to mention not to forget rather heated both driver and passenger the steering wheel is also heated you get a dual panoramic sunroof up top and a very nice bose audio system uh, for some great uh, tunes uh, to be played in this car now i want to draw your attention to this infotainment screen here because firstly as uh, i've just been reliably informed is that mazda very much want their drivers to drive the cars not to have a tech fest and play around with the screen so you'll notice that rather than it being over here or in line with these air vents and all of that it's actually further inset from the driver generally in the dashboard the second thing is also it's not a touch screen so if i press that you know do that all i'm doing is leaving greasy fingerprints on the screen and not doing anything because of course mazda have their infotainment screen controls via a set of buttons and rotary knobs down the middle here to make it really easy and much more easier to get some sort of muscle memory going in terms of interacting with this screen the other handy thing is of course the air conditioning controls are set down the bottom here in actual physical buttons rather than again touch sort of capacitive things so it makes muscle memory quite easy to um, acquire for using this car now Speaking of this infotainment screen, yes, as you can see there, it's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, you've got Bluetooth connectivity, the sound is great as I mentioned before, you've got navigation inbuilt uh, and all of that, but the one thing I want to draw your attention to is actually the little icon on the bottom that says 
driver 2 or in this case the driver profile because you can actually set a new one up for the drivers of the car and what that includes is putting in your height for example and the car will calculate what's the perfect position to have your seat in in terms of height in terms of um, the sort of length away from the steering wheel it'll adjust the steering it'll you can save you know your favorite preferences in terms of the radio station the volume I mean there's so many I think Davis said there's something like 200 different points of customization you can have saved to your profile and I'll actually demonstrate it now um, in some respect so if you go into settings there like so yes of course there you go you can see the EV settings there but if I scroll down the bottom to the driver personalization system select that you can see there the preset ones there and I can actually click here and add a new driver and you can see there that the um, system will take about five minutes to sort of engage everything according to your taste but if I do press OK there the first thing is in terms of helping you find that ideal driving position now I'm around about 179 centimeters so if I press that and then proceed with the next step it'll actually start flicking things around so the steering the seats all of that stuff so that I have a perfect angle for my elbows my legs are or rather my right leg is not tired at all when shifting between the brake and accelerator and so on and so forth so it is actually very comfortable and I can see the edge of the bonnet there and it's also adjusted the heads up display so that it's perfectly in my field of view for that sort of information as you can see there I can also follow the tips menu and do some more adjustments and it'll actually give me a guide on how to find the perfect position there you go if um, you know you're not happy with how Mazda have set it up for you but so far I've tried a couple of times now to find my driving position using the system and it's just been absolutely perfect the next step from here is actually if you click save is in terms of driver recognition so it's got a, sc a scanner just in there and it'll actually profile your face and so that when you do sit in the car it picks up your face and then sets everything according to how you have saved your profile in this driver personalization system and it does so through using a series of scans where you keep turning your head from side to side and there you go it's almost instantaneous so that's quite a remarkable thing so far on this infotainment screen it's just feature and tech loaded now in front of the driver you have this digital instrument cl cluster and there's a lot going on particularly in this EV mode as you can see there in the middle you have the Mazda CX-60 with an indication of the uh, Mazda adaptive cruise control or rather what it will look like when it's turned on you have your speed at the top there your speed sign recognition showing up there and then on the left side you have your meter which shows between power and uh, recharge as well as your gear and then on the right side you have your average kilowatt hours per 100 k's and then your liters per 100 k's in terms of efficiency and then you can see the meter to the right is split up in terms of fuel uh, full and empty in terms of the battery and then full and empty in terms of petrol and down the bottom you've got a two different charge or range indicators one electric only and one in hybrid mode so there's so much of information on here but all vital stuff and displayed sort of as you can see just now a car actually drove past us at the back and the car picked it up and showed on here which direction the um, indication was coming from so there is so much going on in terms of safety and information here with this Mazda CX-60 so it's a very intelligent car and that becomes even more apparent with the uh, my drive when you keep uh, changing the drive mode so if I go up here from EV so you can see the animations there firstly go into off-road mode below and you can see the entire layout has changed the color scheme has changed I now have a rev counter obviously a lot more vital to see something like that in off-road circumstances and if I move up above EV into normal it changes once again as well as the color layout uh, you get some more sort of information according 
on the left side also where it tells you whether you're in EV or hybrid mode and then move up to sport there again a nice Homura uh, red animation there and you got your rev counter back again um, and all the dials and colors have now changed to red which uh, is kind of cool because in this particular car it's the soul crystal red as well so almost reflecting that to a certain extent take a step back and the steering wheel feels really nice to hold the leather is just just amazing to touch it's heated as well of course and then you've got the buttons laid out here in typical mazda fashion with small paddle shifters hiding behind the steering column there now going back to the buttons here particularly on the left side where you have your audio inputs there and your call you press the info button which is just inset there and it does actually change what you can see on the right side there between the mazda iActive sense you can have nothing displayed there you can have your trip info as i just showed your temperatures stuff like that so there is so much that you can flick through to add or detract some more information from the screen there the right side those are all of your controls for the mazda adaptive cruise control system so your speed um, distance from the car in front and then of course your various lane uh, keep systems too. All right, so Harry here, your favorite rear seat dummy. Uh, and today, um, to cover for the CX-60 um, rear part, one thing that they've covered in the beginning of the video is that the access is a little bit compromised because of how far forward the rear wheels um, come into it. But then, once you're actually inside the car, there's plenty of knee room and head room, even though it has this big panoramic sunroof that does make a difference. And even also, if the seats are um, all the way backward. Um, speaking of materials, the leather is really, really good. It is perforated, so it makes for it to be a little bit more comfortable, especially when you have the seat heating on, which is always welcome. You also get two USB-C charging ports and an actual three-pin socket, so you can charge your uh, devices as well. Um, there is a uh, armrest in here, and you also get a pair of um, vent for the air conditioning all right i think that's pretty much it for the rear part and now it's back to the boys so they can cover the driving So it actually pulls away really well and this sort of sub six second zero to 100 is quite apparent and you'll notice or you probably you may have heard that it goes straight into petrol mode from there which is which is quite good uh, the big thing for me is well the big thing about this vehicle is obviously the fact that it's a p have and i just want to cover that with straight away when i picked it up we had roughly well actually was forecasting 50 kilometers of range um so not 63 which is what is advertised but basically 50 kilometers of range and i hit straight onto the motorway then did some round the sort of suburb driving and ended up going on to well actually one kilometer left at 49 so it was really bang on which i have to say is awesome for those that are interested in just going ev only at the same time i would probably recommend to be honest if you want to make the most of something like this and you use it in the hybrid mode because combining the petrol engine as well as the electric powertrain you get as dave said um, a liters per 100 case figure of in the twos so it can be so incredibly fuel sippingly efficient for what's to be honest a large suv i love that fuel sippingly efficient this we should coin that yeah you're right and it's it's great to have that sort of flexibility but also you can flick through to sport normal ev only for those that just want to go very quiet and then also off-road so it does have off-road capabilities it does have downhill descent it does have um actually a variety of auto holds those sort of things and the other thing is just it's got so many ADAS so really is very safe and um, very helpful in everything so you've got rear cross traffic recognition you've got front cross, cross traffic recognition lane keep assist blind spot assist or blind spot alerts it tells you if your seat belts are off it just keeps beeping but 
only when you're doing the right thing, well, doing the wrong thing. And other than that, it's a really nice, smooth ride. It does actually beep quite a bit. And to be honest, the beep sounds have almost reminded me of the glory days of Mario Kart, um, you know. But luckily, nobody's throwing bananas on the road in front of us uh, right now. Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> or all those explody <laughs> mushroom things. But speaking of, I guess, in a way, the, the game design and interface design, Mazda have done a great job, as they always do, with the design because the way the dashboard is shaped, the, as Dave showed, the lines and creases on the outside of the car, similarly inside, it feels a nice place to be because it is a nice place to be. You know, the switch gear, the clicks when using this dial in the middle, all of that, you know, the attention to detail, I think, is really commendable. We're sort of going on one of those open pore roads right now, and it's it's comfortable, it's very quiet in here, despite the fact that it's riding on 20-inch wheels. Um, and I mean, yeah, what, what more could you want from an SUV such as this from Mazda? And also the range, you know, you've got so much range once you add the petrol and the PHEV together. But realistically, you could probably just drive PHEV if your commute is obviously under 60 or 50 kilometers per, per day. So that's really good. Visibility all round is great. I like the A pillar is actually quite, quite skinny. So you can see around from there. Uh, big mirrors, big everything really, big, big, big glass big everything it is a large car as um, was pointed out earlier and it certainly looks that way but again it's not a bad thing because that translates to some exceptional room on the inside here a very usable boot all of those things that you would want in a five-seater family SUV of this category and then there's the actual drive itself I mean the Jimbo tie means that it's you can really shove it into corners and it does it doesn't really interfere with the drive it lets you do what you are capable of doing and only interferes if you are a bit rubbish and um, thankfully well I am a bit rubbish but this uh, doesn't interfere that much which is great uh, just for perspective the um, corner we just went around was recommended 55 and we clocked it around about 80 uh, still well 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 within the speed limit of course on this road and I mean there's not much body roll the grip is just exceptional and despite the fact that it's a large SUV just a shade under five meters it's actually quite playful on a road back road like this it does make you enjoy the drive very much um, you know a Mazda CX philosophy yeah and the all-wheel drive is is always good it just means that you can obviously you've got that confidence to push it into whatever corner you want and then obviously the the petrol engine cuts in I mean that's a lot of torque and a lot of kilowatts just to play with and then the efficiency and as Matthew says 2.2 liters per 100 kilometers is is great it's not gonna not gonna hurt your, your wallet at all or hurt the planet So there you have it, the new Mazda CX-60 in Homura. Anyway, again, uh, spec. It is, this one is gonna be the sweet spot. So it's particularly with the PHEV. So you've got plenty of range, plenty of fuel efficiency, plenty of EV-ness, and also plenty of spec. So lots going on in a reasonable sized uh, five-seater SUV. And I really like it as far as the handling goes. I really like the fact that it's upped its game. It's very much in the European uh, luxury market now. And um, yeah, quite impressive actually. Absolutely. I didn't know what to expect when Mazda announced that they were coming out with these this new generation of CX cars. But I mean, just been incredibly impressed all around with the uh, fit, finish, the um, sort of packaging of it, and then of course the luxuries that it also adds in the CX-60. Well done. Nice. Thanks for watching. We'll see if we can get our hands on the CX-90. Anyway, see you next time.